Chris Courtney here once again for New Pragmatic. In this short tutorial, we're going to take a look at the grid tool and how you can utilize it to basically make all of your designs better. Right now, I've got a frame on the screen here in Figma. And what a lot of new designers struggle with is how to, how to properly align all the different assets that they're going to be using to construct you know, their application designs, their website marketing pages, just any number of design tasks that you have, print or digital, really can be enhanced by, by properly aligning it with a grid. Now the question often is, how do I create one of those? So here I've got a desktop frame that, that I've created. And when you're not selected on the frame, this right panel is empty basically. But the moment that you select the frame, you have a series of options here, and one of them is Layout Grid. I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus symbol here to create our first grid. And as you can see, it's just like a, it's, it's, it's just a, a mesh. It's, it's, it's horizontal and vertical lines. It doesn't do a whole lot for you. However, if you're trying to get vertical columns, which is what most people are going for, click the Settings button here, and switch grid to columns. All right, so that gives us vertical columns. Now this is currently set to stretch. There are a few different directions you can go with that, but I'm gonna keep it to stretch for right now. And, and how you basically size these columns is dictated by the margin. This desktop frame is currently 1440 wide. If I wanted to make this a 1200 pixel design, I would simply add a margin of 120, which would remove 240 total, 120 from each side, giving me 1200 pixels across of space to work in. If I wanted something other than a five column design, let's say I wanted a four column design, I could do that. Or if I, if I knew that I wanted multiple tiers of uh, measurements here, I can make it 12. And what this basically allows us to do is to have a two column design, as you can see here. We could also have a three column design. And of course, we could have a four column design as well. Now, this also means that we could mix our column structures. So if we had one column here, two columns there, that works. You could also do this a little wider than that if you'd like. So you could have a wide column and a narrow column. And this is how you begin to really organize your content just by using grid structures. Now you can also use this for baseline grid. To do that, I'm going to come in and I'm going to click the plus symbol, and this is gonna add another grid on top. Here, I will say rows. So you're moving right to left now, or left to right. Here, I'm going to say top, and I want this to, I want this uh, basically to be a one pixel grid and the gutter here says 20. But if I wanted this to be 10, so let's say my let's say my my I was using a base 10 grid, I could simply say 10. However, that doesn't give us a whole lot of rows to line up with, so I'm going to say 1000 and that gives us significantly more basically all all the way down. And this gives us something to align our type with as we move across. Another, another way you could use this is if you set a gutter of eight, and this gives us an eight pixel grid, which allows, allows us to move down the page in measurements of eight. And technically you would wanna say seven because that's taking into account the height of the line itself. And that gives you the eight pixel grid. Um, if you want it to create this and have it uh, have a vertical version of this as well, you could always go columns and you could say, I'm going to align that with the left 
and this is going to be one and the gutter is going to be eight or seven rather and the count is going to be a thousand and now you have a grid structure on top of the column structure so you can come in here and draw shapes on top of your grid and it's going to immediately begin snapping. See how the, the red line, the red guides come into play and it's very easy to come in and just like line it right up. The other thing that you could do is you can actually add another grid on top of this grid that only covers the space selected. But to do that, this, this element has to be a frame. So to make this a frame, to make this, this rectangle a frame, I simply can control click, bring up my drop down, and say frame selection. This creates a frame out of that item. And I'm going to change the color on this to none, mainly because I'm using it just to pull in a grid. I will place a layout grid here, and I will say columns. And let's just say I want I wanted this to be a three column design. Um, I could also change the opacity here that way we could definitely see it Let's set the stretch the margin is zero because it's just on the shape inside of the larger the larger frame which represents the page i could obviously switch this around be like that as well and you can do as many of these as you like and what i would encourage you to do is change the name of these though and that way you know exactly what it is that you're highlighting you can also lock that down so you can place content over the top of it if you need it to, and then hide it away. Additionally, when we first created our grid, it gave us, it gave us this design. It gave us a grid. But you'll notice that we don't have as much control over it. We can just say size 10. We could also say size 8. And what that means is that, you know, this is, this is a literal 8 pixel grid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is great for spacing. Okay, fantastic for spacing. So if you wanted an eight pixel grid, there's no better way to get to it than this. Um, a lot of a, a lot of typography is is set up in eights. A lot of spacing is set up in eights. So it's it's just a really a really great thing to have. Now, if you wanted to save this, you could simply hit the grid styles um, hit the plus symbol I'm going to create a new grid style I'm going to call this 8 picks grid and that style has been created it's here if I if I come back over here to my desktop and I hit subtract that takes the grid away but notice it took all of the grids away right so previously this 8 picks grid it had both my vertical grid and the horizontal grid so if we if we come in here and we we edit this what we should see is those two grid properties are saved together and this is one of the things that it took me a while to understand if I want to have multiple grids setting on top of each other I have to create them both and then save them as a grid style because let's let's take let's go back and let's take this one away if I were to if I were to create a new grid for that column structure so we'll recreate the first column structure that we did it was 12 columns it had a margin of 120 to the sides and there it is if I then decided hey I want to place my 8 pixel grid over the top of that that eight pixel grid wiped out the column structure I had before. Let me actually change this so it's a little easier to see. I'll change this to six. And now I will try to add the eight on top of it. And you'll see it, it, it blew it away. So just understand that when you, when you have grid styles, you can have multiple grids on top of each other, but you have to save them together. And why this, why would this be great? Well, if you had say another frame, and you want it to apply that grid style to it, 
it's simple it, it's as simple as coming in saying grid p 8 pex grid and there it is i also want to show you one more while we're here i want to show you the difference between layout grid stretch and then center when you use stretch you're, you're always creating your width from the from the margin but when you use center you're always creating your width from the actual column itself. So if I wanted a five column grid that had the columns exactly 100 pixels wide, I would do it that way. If I then came in and said, I want them to be 12 columns, that means that I'm at 1200, but I also have this gutter of 20. So you have to begin doing, doing the math and this isn't just 100, it's 100 plus 20. So 100 plus 20, we're get, we're, we're, you know, it's 100 plus 20 times 12. We're, we're currently, I believe, at 1420 with 10 pixels to the side, all right? And there is no, it, this is offset, this is not margin. So then we have, to, we have to start thinking, okay, if I wanted a gutter of 10, you know, now I'm getting in, in the custom gutters. If I wanted my width to be 90, this is now actually 1200 pixels across with the column gutter, uh, the gutters here on the side of 120, the, the margin that we created before, we're now just creating it in a different way. So, so understand that if you want a particular margin, you, you want to use stretch. If you want a particular column width, you probably want to use center. You can also use left, and right and when you use left and right you also get the you also get this offset so if i pulled this away if i said zero that's going to align it all the way to the right same thing it's going to align it all the way to the left okay and you might be wondering why is this all important well let's look at let's look at an example here from stripe all right this is the stripe um home page recently redesigned and you'll notice you know, there there appears to be a specific width that is dictated from the top all the way down and it doesn't appear to be affecting this 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 um this design here is going all the way to the edge but you'll notice that that alignment comes back into play here and it also looks like it's coming back into play here so to see exactly how this is how this is working, let's go ahead and and apply it to this page right here. Now the grid structure that I've created here on this first desktop doesn't appear to apply, so I'm going to take it away so we can see exactly what's going on. Now if I wanted to create a grid, I could do that just by again hitting the, the layout grid. And now I'm going to I'm going to really focus on columns here. And we'll give it a margin of 140. It looks like it's got more margin than that, so 180 190 getting close, probably 200. So looks like it's not quite 200. My Stripe logo is just a little bit outside. It looks like it's lining up. Let's f focus on the button here. Like 195. So what I'm guessing that they've done here is they've probably created uh, they probably uh, created this from the center rather than having a particular um, margin on it. So if we said 100, and then we said 12. something in that realm but what you'll notice is lines up pretty well over here lines up pretty well there so there's definitely a structure here that's being utilized and as we look down and let's uh, let's change the color on this grid easier to see as we look down you can see that it's following that same pattern all the way down and 
And this is really interesting because you can see that this is really a four column design down here below. It's lining up pretty much spot on. There's these little dashes in between. And then it appears that this design is, is really, it's really a two column design here and then a four column design there. This is a two column design. It's, it's like basically using a half over here, half over there. But the alignment, you know, what what's important to realize is this isn't this is not deviating outside of the margins that have been set up. Um, there's a clear structure here, especially especially the way these these little tick marks here line up perfectly as it goes down. There's a clear structure being used, and that's the most important thing to realize when you're when you're working with a grid is that you should be you should be organizing all the content that is key for consumption on the same grid. This image in this background that slides that slices across doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's it's the content that I'm that I'm really focused on here. So so when you when you look at this and you say okay well well what grid structure what grid structure is being used here? It's really a hero unit. It's just one real column of content with uh, an image to the side. The, the navigation here to the top follows some principles, but it's mainly just utilizing margin. As you come down, this is a two column design, but inside of that two column design, there are a couple of columns right here. So that's one, that's two. And then the other two columns that are present are here. But we refer to this as a nested column because it's within this design, uh, this vertical shell here. So this, these two columns are nested inside of this one, but this is two columns wide as a, as a page. And then this technically is a four column design and we know that because when we apply it down below, you can just basically replicate the shapes and they come into play. Also interesting here is this module or component that they have here is basically half half the width of the page and then they turn the rest of this over to an image. So that's that's a really quick overview of how you can utilize grids inside of Figma, how to create them, how to how to break down existing designs and kind of better understand how those structures are being built and then hopefully you can take this now knowing how to create grid styles you can apply them to different different frames that you create along the way and that means that your designs will be more consistent as you work through your next project i'm chris courtney for new pragmatic thanks for watching